All right, so season two of The Chosen is over, and season three isn't going to be coming out for a little while. So let's talk about what is coming up in season three. Welcome to the Snipe Life, where we look at creativity through the lens of Christianity. We often break down The Chosen and talk about specific details that come from scripture and the story of the show itself. But today we're going to be talking about season three and what we can expect to see coming up. And there's some amazing stuff. If this is your first time seeing our channel, we'd love for you to check out our other videos and see what you like. If you do like it, please hit that like button and consider subscribing. It really, really helps us out. Now, these aren't things that I'm just pulling out of the Bible and saying, oh, well, this is next. So this is what's going to happen. These are actually things that Dallas Jenkins has talked about in several different interviews, several different live streams, several different settings. And so I'm pulling from his information directly to tell us hey this is gonna come up in season three now first up is a section in the Bible from mark 6 where specifically Jesus sends out the Apostles two by two now we know at the end of season two Jesus finally has all 12 of his Apostles so there's kind of two things here that we expect to see we expect to see him well announce them as his followers as his Apostles and kind of bring them all together as the 12 but then we also expect him to send them out two by two to do miracles, to cast out demons, and to do healings. And so we see this in Mark 6. Mark 6 verse 7 says, He called the twelve and began to send them out two by two, and gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except a staff, no bread, no bag, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals, and not to put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you when you leave shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them so they went out and proclaimed that people should repent and they cast out many demons and anointed many with oil who were sick and healed them so this is a pretty large part of their ministry so far in mark 6 they had just gotten started kind of on this journey jesus had just been rejected by nazareth which i wonder if we're going to see that in season three but then they are sent out on their own after seeing jesus example of a lot of these different things that have been happening and so they actually get to do some amazing stuff they are casting out demons they are healing people they have power over the unclean spirits which jesus has given to them and so it's it's really a really cool section i cannot wait to see this played out on screen it's going to be amazing so the next big thing that we expect to see from season three is about this guy right here now matthew the tax collector we saw in season one and season two and of course we're going to see him in season three season one he was the tax collector we saw his life as he was running with the romans doing their bidding and then at the end was called by jesus and gives it up season two we see the growth that happens from that sacrifice he sacrificed the things that he had, which ultimately was nothing, right? To gain everything with Christ. And we see this conversation that happens with Philip during season two that brings all of this about. But then we see more and more development as the season goes on, culminating in the fact that he tells Mary Magdalene, I'm not a good person. And then finally, he is with Jesus during the season finale of season two, talking with him and discussing the Sermon on the Mount and having this very powerful moment. So Matthew is growing for sure, but in season three, we're gonna see even more of that growth. Remember, there are certain things about Matthew that have not changed yet, right? There are certain things that he still has to apologize for. We see in season two, episode two, as Peter is kind of yelling at him, and even though Peter is being aggressive and maybe a little bit over the top, he's not wrong, as Andrew said. And so this is a really important piece of Matthew's story. He needs to apologize to the group. He needs to come back to them and start growing with them so that they can be one cohesive team. Now, Dallas has also said that Matthew's wardrobe is probably going to change in season three as well, giving him a different appearance to show this change that's happening. This happens a lot within different movies and shows like this. And then Matthew's counterpart, Simon Peter, he's gonna get a big section in this. And I'm super excited for all of you that love Eden. She is gonna be a pretty big part of season three, which is amazing. We did not see Eden much at all in season two. She was only in the season finale. And so to be able to see more and more of her character, that development, that marriage is going to be really amazing. And Dallas has said specifically that we're going to be focusing on the good parts of marriage, but also the bad parts of marriage, the hard parts of marriage, because marriage is not easy, as many of us know. And personally, I think this is going to be one of the most powerful parts of season three. I think marriages are going to be healed. People are going to have a better understanding of what marriage is supposed to look like, but also understanding that they're not alone in their hardships. Marriage is hard. 
and no marriage is perfect. And that includes the disciples. And so having, you know, Simon Peter be the only one that we know that was married and have Eden be such a strong character in the show, I think it's going to be an amazing point for season three. So our fourth thing to expect in season three of The Chosen is going to be more political upheaval. So we were introduced to basically three different factions, right? We have, well, the Jewish Pharisees, we have the Romans, and then we have Jesus's group, right? The disciples and the followers of Jesus. And so between these three different groups, and I know there's more than that, but these are the three major groups that I think are going to be focused on in The Chosen. These groups are all shifting and changing. And so as we see the disciples go out two by two, as we see Jesus's followers doing more and more, we're also going to see the Pharisees and the Roman people do more and more as well. Now, of course, we expect to see Yanni and Shmuel, but we also expect to see Shammai. Remember, he is one of the most important and influential people in the Sanhedrin. And this is going to maybe wrap up with Nicodemus and other things like that as well. I think overall the Pharisees will be getting more and more and more upset, but I don't think we'll see the culmination of this for a few more seasons where they want to plot to kill Jesus. I think they just want to kind of deal with him for now. Now on the other side of that coin, we also see the Romans. And remember in season two, Quintus had a conversation with Jesus. And that conversation basically went like, Jesus, you're creating an issue for me, but you're also doing some good things for me. So continue to do the good things and please stop doing the bad things. No more bones, Jesus, is what Quintus says in season two. And Jesus replies, even during that conversation, well, I can't make any promises. And this is because Jesus obviously knows what's going to come. He knows that more followers are gonna come, more people are gonna listen to what he has to say, and he is gonna become somewhat of a nuisance, at least in the Pharisees and the Romans' eyes. So we'll begin to see more and more of that plot start to unfold. A little side note here, I'd love to see some more of Yusuf as well. He's definitely an interesting character. And then last, but certainly not least, is the feeding of the 5,000. As we've all heard before, Dallas is making this a public announcement because you even have a chance to be a part of The Chosen. You guys can donate $1,000 and get a chance to be a part of the feeding of the 5,000. Just like in season two when there was over 2,000 extras for the Sermon on the Mount, it's gonna be the same situation here, but possibly even bigger. Remember, in the scripture itself, it's not just 5,000 people. It's actually only 5,000 men. That's not including women and children. So it, a lot of people say that it could have been upwards of 15 to 20,000 people that Jesus fed with five loaves and two fish. Now this is one of the most common of Jesus's miracles found in scripture. It's found in Matthew 14 and some other gospels as well, but this is an amazing story and I cannot wait to see it played out on screen. Just like in the end of season two, how all of those people just made it feel like this massive event. I think the same thing is gonna be happening here, if not even more so. But on top of that, it's the stories that surround this one that I'm excited about as well. In Matthew 14, it actually shows Jesus walking on the water right after this event. So I wonder if we'll see that in season three as well. All right, I hope you enjoyed those five things that I expect to see from season three. Most of those things are directly from Dallas's mouth. So it's gonna be an amazing season three, no doubt. But if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and click the bell if you wanna see new videos that come out from us on a weekly basis. We love you guys so much. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for being part of our community. We'll see you on the next one. Peace.